if a child looks shy, it's, it's about finding that way to get them to, to, to feel safe enough to come out. And even if they just stand up with you, I mean, that's fantastic. And then sometimes you get these magical children who just soar and, the, and then you can soar with them and go where they take you and it's really fun. Or if you have the shy child, it doesn't matter, you just, you know, just puffy them along and um, if, they, if they can't do more than just stand, it's fine. I cannot believe that I do this. I cannot believe that I get to meet all of these children and travel around these schools, these amazing schools from Desal 1 to Desal 10. I cannot believe I get to do that. One, two, three. had a vision of, of sharing the place with others and so at the at present um, we're sharing it by using some of the arts both by music and drama and especially with young people and it's it's been really exciting being able to do that develop those those sort of programs for, for schools and for young people and for our friends <laughs> When you awake, will you smile for me? Hey, hey. And the music workshop that we offer is about um, in children where they have some interest in music, and we would um, take them and get them to write a song and record that and show them and help them through that whole process. I'll take um, a drama class for a week or three days, and we'll produce a play at the end, or we'll just whatever the school wants. Like Cindy? Like to make my breakfast? And make my lunch? And make my dinner? Like totally whatever, like now? Well, things were very, very bad for Cinderella, but they were about to change. Suddenly there was a great knock at the door. The door knocked three times. One, two, three, and in came a messenger from the king. She stood about there. She faced her audience, and she bowed low. And she said... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't grow up being artistic or clever. I just grew up being shy, really, really incredibly shy. In fact, I was a horse. I used to gallop around and whinny and things like that, which is a good look, especially when you're 13. But um, uh, then in 1983, I was asked to do a entertainment debate. So I did that and then kind of gradually got more into it and got into theatre work in 91 and then accidentally fell into storytelling in 94 because a local librarian asked me to come and tell a story in the holidays because... Locally, I was associated with children, both through the theatre and pantomime and by my work with Child Youth and Family. So I thought she meant to read a book, but she didn't. She meant to tell a story. So I made up the story, incredibly boring, but I thought it was clever because it rhymed. And I took a suitcase full of clothes. There were two and a half children there. I made them dress up. It was really, really bad. Now I'm full-time where we go around the world every year telling stories. Not a bad gig. <sighs> Tarangi means heaven or sky. And we came here 20 years ago, walked in the property, walked up the river in fact, light shafting down through the ferns onto an emerald green patch in the middle of the river. <gasps> Tarangi, heaven. We have on our property over the last 12 years um, built up uh, quite a little city here. We now have a music studio, we have a big venue, we have a large drama room and an indoor stage, and we have a very big outdoor stage in a natural amphitheater. So when the kids come and they might stay with us for four days, might stay with us for one day, uh, the teachers come with them, and we, um, we have a ball really. 
and the kids we have also have a large swimming pool so that if it's in the summer and it's hot they can swim and have lots of fun as well we have a river they can go to the river uh, waterfall just up the road um, I want every person who comes to us to go away feeling that they are absolutely the best people that were ever invented in the whole world I write books, children's books, and Peter writes um, amazing children's songs. I'm not biased, but they are pretty cool. <laughs>